shadow gardener, Nico. We're very happy to bring those who are streaming online or here in person. Just experience this moment to celebrate the midsummer and explore subconscious mind. So what we'll be doing today is using a beautiful, beautiful herb called mugwort, which I have growing right here in this pot. This herb is deeply associated with the midsummer due to its nature of elevating dreams, creating a sedative effect, and it's honestly one of my very favorite herbs that I've ever worked with. It was the very first one that I've ever forged, ever smoked, ever really experienced and experimented with. So it's very deeply important to my heart. And I'm very happy to be shared with anyone here. So what I have here today is a beautiful vial full of mugwort tea. So this drink, some medical things about it, it is not recommended if you are pregnant at all, because it can induce labor and abortions. But it is fantastic for helping people with irregular periods and things in menstrual cycles, beyond its spirit application. of the herb is a method of cleansing that I definitely prefer compared to other methods that are more commonly used a sage or para santo due to their nature of being more in nature. This plant grows like a weed all through North America, but not too much around here with us in Miami. So this is the dream lab after all. And we're here to explore the unconscious mind, the nature of our dreams, specifically the capacity for healing within our dreams. We all dream, sometimes we don't remember our dreams, but we all dream. And I think dreaming and interacting with your dreams is one of the best pathways to healing. Your dream produces sim symbols from your unconscious, you know, of different insecurities that you're going through, desires that you have. And if you can uncode their meaning, you can learn things that you didn't already know about yourself. It could be a really beautiful process of healing and self-love. So you can see around here I have some books about dreaming, about symbols and images, particularly from Carl Jung. He would use this process called active imagination with his clients. And we're gonna to try to do this today, active imagination. So what it is, 
is bringing symbols or images from your dreams into your consciousness, into wakefulness. So we're going to try to go into almost a hypnagogic trance in the state between wakefulness and dreaming. In this state, the brain produces theta waves at a frequency around four to seven hertz. So what we're trying to do is bring these symbols and images from our dreams, from our unconscious, into consciousness. So we can shine the light of love and understanding upon them. So how we do this? There's two different methods. One method is you can let your unconscious mind take over. Going into a meditation, closing your eyes, focusing on your breath, and just allowing yourself to follow whatever images come up. Waiting until they become autonomous, moving on their own. The other method is to specifically choose a symbol or image from your dream. If you've had any dreams lately that have been really significant or meaningful to you, try to recall an image from that dream. Maybe it's a character, maybe it's just like a shape or a color. But whatever it is, you can just allow it to arise within your consciousness. Focus upon it. Just allow yourself to be with it. And see where it leads you, see where it takes you. Once you find it, you can ask it questions like, what are you here to teach me? What do I need to learn from you? The answer may not be obvious. It may be just something that you feel more in your body, some impression. Allow yourself to feel that and intuitively feel the answer of what your unconscious images are trying to teach you. So I think each of you has a card. And after this experience, you can write whatever you want onto the card, whatever you feel like is relevant to your particular healing journey. Feel free to write it down. But we're gonna start with some deep breaths. We're gonna breathe in through the nose, hold for seven seconds, and then breathe out for seven seconds. So we're gonna start with breathing in. Hold. Breathing out. Breathing in. Holding it. Breathing out. Breathing in. Holding in. Breathing out. You can just imagine your mind sinking into the ocean of your heart. Not trying to force anything, just allowing whatever your mind wants to reveal to you, allow that to be revealed. We're letting go of all expectations for how we think this should be and falling into a place of simple allowing.
or allowing ourselves to fall deeper into this hypnagogic state. The state in between wakefulness and dreams.
the intention here is to be dreaming while we're awake. So the boundary between your dreaming state and your waking state, you feel that begin to dissipate. And so the dreams are right here in front of you. It's about allowing the ego to surrender. Surrender to the heart. Surrender to these deeper images, these deeper symbols that want to reveal themselves to you. As you feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into your unconscious mind, mind sinking into the ocean of the heart.
Now we're going to do some ohms together, five of them. So we're going to breathe in the same way you've been breathing in. And on the breath out, just a... So breathing in. Hear the vibrations throughout your body, starting from the stomach going all the way up to the head. Feel as you sink deeper and deeper into your unconscious, into your primordial being, your higher self. This is a process of exploration, but you have to be open to finding what's there. You have to be open to seeing what's really behind the curtains of your mind have an attitude of courage and trust to know that you'll be okay no matter what. And so you come into contact with these symbols and images and you ask, what are you here to teach me? How can I learn from you? How can I best show you love and understanding? And as you say this, you're saying this to yourself. Because these images of your dreams and your unconscious are parts of yourself, often disowned and repressed. So in this meditative process, we try to integrate them into a unity.
Whenever you're ready, you can return to the space, back into the waking state. Just notice any changes in your body and mind. Just take note of what came up for you during this active imagination process. It's not always easy to access these contents in our mind. Oh, Jung would call that a synchronicity right there. Actually, there was an experience with Jung and Freud. Freud was his teacher, and they were discussing matters of the unconscious mind in Freud's office, and a table cracked. It was made out of wood, it just randomly cracked. And Carl Jung was like, see right there, that's a synchronicity, that means something. And Freud was like, no, that doesn't mean anything. That's just meaningless. He said, but if it were to happen again, then maybe it would. And lo and behold, it happened again. The table cracked again for no apparent reason. And Jung was like, see? <laughs> These kind of things, the supernatural, there is some substantiation to it. Freud still discounted it as just a coincidence. <laughs> but I personally think that there's, there's meaning there. Like, the world in which we inhabit is a world of our own mental space. You know, we project what we feel into what we experience when we're interacting with people, music, whatever we're interacting with, we bring ourselves to that space. And so the mind is everywhere. <laughs> these messages, these symbols, these images are everywhere. It's just about being receptive to see them and to be attuned to what they're trying to say to you. So now we're going to open up this space for, to a dialogue about dreams um, for anyone to share what their experience is with dreaming. Um, maybe it's what you've experienced here, maybe it's something you've experienced in the past. Anything that you feel is significant relating to dreams and healing that you want to bring up. Um, do you want to start? I feel like what would be great is to hear from our two beautiful artists joining us today, my five studio with Amy mm. and Josh. You know, we talked a little before about our different experiences with dreams, and I'd love to hear from you both again. Amy, would you explain?
me, like, I feel like dreams help me process what I'm doing, and the things that I want to do, and things I'm afraid of, and, like, in a functional way, just, like, very useful for, like, I don't know, like, thinking about reality, and at the same time, like, other realities, too. Like, not just this world, but all the world. Sure. Yeah, I'll share about my uh, experience with dreaming real quick. Um, yeah, my whole life I've had really vivid dreams, and I've been writing them down for years. Actually, I started recording them on voice memos, because when you wake up in the morning, you're super groggy. It's hard to like get out your journal and you know write a ton of stuff, um, especially when there's so many details. Like I was writing like five pages. I was like, this, this is taking a little too long. So now I just record uh, my dreams in the morning when I wake up. Sometimes it's three or four. I'll wake up three or four times in the night, and each time there'll be a new dream. Um, I used to think that nightmares were a bad thing, and I think often they are associated you know, with negativity, but nightmares provide an amazing opportunity for healing. It's parts of your unconscious that are repressed, um, and so those are the parts that we need to give the most love to, the most understanding to, because we don't yet understand them. Um, I'll just quickly share a dream that I had. Um, there, was, there were two characters. There was like an archetypal woman and an archetypal man. Um, the feminine within uh, the man, according to Jung, is generally called the anima, and then the masculine within the woman is called the animus. Um, so the, anima and the animus, the feminine and masculine principles. They were symbolized as these two characters in my dream, and they were in this big building. They led me down a hallway, and I get to the end, and they're both like chasing after me, like demon faces, you know, snakes in the hair and like horns. Um, and my instinct was to run away, you know, a lot of these scary creatures, uh, I'm gonna run away from them. So I started running away and then a voice came into my head which said, no, you should turn around, you should go back. Um, Jung would call that voice the self in the dream when there's like a disembodied voice that's giving you some piece of information. So I turned back, I went back to face them and then I just like looked at them and I said, I love you. <laughs> and they were still like super scary looking at me like they wanted to eat me or kill me. And I said, it's okay, I still love you. And then we were all like hugging and crying together. Um, and then when I woke up from that, I felt amazing. Like I felt like something had shifted within me. That's just like one example of, of, what, of how you can heal in your dreams. Like those characters that are chasing you, trying to kill you. You know, instead of running away, if you can bring enough consciousness in the space to like, what are you here to teach me? What do I have to learn from you? Um, something amazing can really be revealed. You can learn a lot about yourself. So I'm still in the process of learning more about dreaming, but it's been, it's been an incredible journey so far. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll open the space to Rizo next. <laughs>
to the swing control, to allow it to feel this. But, and I find that lucid dreaming is the opposite, letting your conscious mind exist in that dream world, giving both those levels of yourself the ability to experience each other's world. Because both of them are, this, both are part of you, and they make up who you are and the way you function. Whether you realize it or not, your subconscious mind is crying out to be heard, is crying out to be allowed to express itself. In the same way that we feel a little desire to lucid dream, we want to be able to have control and be able to experience that world as well. That's a little bit of like my general past. And my, my, this kind of meditation that I've done today is something that i found has been helpful in like these deep visualizations and using these medicinal herbs, like beautiful mugworts, has helped me in being able to bridge that gap that exists in all. Talking, what you're talking is like, in what ways have you know, dreaming, because dreams have been something that's impactful to all. I'm sure everyone's had a moment that they've just like woken up from a tense dream. And as artists, I think there's the thought process of how do dreams affect the art that we create? I mean, is there any ways you found, even if like you're trying to create your own like, dream like world through the visuals you do? Would you elaborate more on that? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to articulate, but maybe some people can relate to the feeling of having a really, really vivid dream. Like someone you know, or someone you used to know, or going somewhere you've been, and then waking up and having this like total blurry, foggy connection to that familiar spot, like, that's something that's definitely happened in my dreams. Like, I'm going to the same location, or I'm seeing the same person, and I know, I know that that's, like, a, quote, real place or somewhere I've been, but not being able to fully remember where it was at the same deja time, you know? Deja vu? Yeah, like, like deja vu, but almost... Dream deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even, like, blur, like, blurrier. Like it's like I know it, but I also don't know it at that like recollection moment when I wake up or when I randomly remember my dream during the day or I decide to share my dream with someone and I'm like telling the story of my dream and then I'm just like confused. I'm like, wait, but how how, how was I there? Or, I've never been to this place that feels familiar. Um, and I think that that's something that I tried to capture in a way in my art and I actually didn't even realized that I was doing that until I started talking to someone else about my dreams, um, another artist, and and she asked me like a question around these topics, and, and I started to kind of put these connections together, um, and like in a very maybe straightforward way, something that I'm trying to do more of or understand more of is like even the, the visualization of water, like water is something that we all know and we've seen, but water is also like literally takes the, any shape, any form, any body. Um, so I really like the idea of, of using water as like this symbol or image that feels very comforting to me, but also could be anything in a way or could look any way. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's something I'm still figuring out. And one more thing I'll say, I'm just like the role of dreams on my art is there's so many different interpretations of just the definition of a dream. Like when we're talking about dreaming right now, are we talking about when we go to sleep, what we see and feel? Are we talking about what we hope and dream for? Like are we talking about meditation and opening up a space where we can like reset or relax or retrain our brains? So something that I think about in my heart is this relationship between like these different visualizations in connection to other people, for example, like my partner Josh, like as he's creating the music and I'm creating the visuals, 
usually it's just us two. Um, there's like this constant conversation between us that is literally unspoken. <laughs> um, and I feel like there's a really big connection there between my myself in my dreams and myself in my in my regular not dreaming self. Anyway, so all of these kind of like connections between yeah, like familiarity, the unknown, and the connections between them is something I'm trying to like stretch a little bit more. Um, yeah. I was gonna say to me, uh, dream the dream world is like a notion of the subconscious that connects all the minds together. That's why you kind of sometimes uh, I was gonna say that earlier. You kind of <laughs> said that. Uh, that's why sometimes you dream with somebody. It's almost like you go tapping into that ocean. Um, I did have a dream growing up where I fell off this crystallized cave and I never fell into the bottom. And that dream just kept repeating itself, repeating itself, repeating itself. And I would wake up and be like, what the heck was this, was this being? And at the time, I didn't know any crystals. I was a child. Uh, and to me, dreams bring closure sometimes. You know, um, somebody that passed away, um, failed relationships, either friendships or romantic. Uh, and sometimes things that I need to heal. You know, dreaming with people that there's certain feelings that uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go back to it. You kind of want to tap into your subconscious and not have to deal with it. Um, and dreaming of melodies or songs, you know, it's happened to me many times when you wake up in the sun in the morning, you're like, you can't remember what the hell sounded really good. <laughs> yeah. You know? Have you ever tried to play that song? Or play 100%. That 100%. That? Yes. 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 It's happened before where I was like, okay. This sounds good. Let me let me put it to you know. I'm a musician. I am. I sing. I play guitar, percussion. Something you had mentioned is feeling that unspoken connection, and it kind of brings up the question that like, do you believe dreams kind of exist solely in our own subconscious mind? Or do they exist in a more ethereal form outside of ourselves? Where do you feel like that unspoken connection comes from? Sometimes they say you can astral project when you dream, right? That you believe your body. So perhaps you go to another dimension, you go to a different space that's not your body, I guess. <laughs> I know with myself, I've definitely had moments where I, I fully believe that your conscious mind is not secluded to this body. And in some of the most jarring like, evidence I have for myself is having had moments where I've dreamt with people. Uh, people like, I've had like, some people who are very close to me. Like, I'm going through these intense dreams when I am telling them, and they same express. The same symbols. Yeah, I feel like we have the same dream. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they do, I see someone in my dream do something to me, and then they tell me they were in a dream, and he has someone in the same man. And the level of synchronicity within all that. Yeah, synchronicity, which is Carl, you came up with that term. But, um, no, I, what resonated with you with what you're saying, you're talking about like the ocean. It's like, I do believe that there is like a collective consciousness, a collective unconscious that connects us all together, which is why like you go through different, you know, anthropologically you go to like to different communities, you know, throughout history, having similar Im images, similar symbols, similar themes, you know, because we all are connected through that field of consciousness. I catch your breath record. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Is that a collective else? consciousness, a collective knowledge of all humanity that exists within our brains? Exactly. As we go and, you know, have babies, even that person doesn't have interaction, that information, that information is still within, you know, our brains can be tapping into I agree with you on Thinking about us, like within this experience that we all shared together today, what were we feeling? What were we dreaming about? What were we hoping for? What were we expecting coming in here? And 
there are certain expectations that are different. There are reality different than our expectations. I had no expectations. <laughs> you guys, like, the whole guy, like, your boys, I was like, wanted to hug you, so I was really excited. <laughs> 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 I was like, you know, that's what I appreciate. Of course, yeah. yeah. I was able to kind of tap into like my ancestral feelings. I feel like all my dreams are a space for me and my just I don't want to say ancestors, but just like all the energies that exist to like really like mix it with that, like you were saying. Um, so I just love a lot of support because I feel like I tend to be very cerebral and like I'm trying to kind of just kind of get somewhere to get out of my head. Um, so I feel like my ancestors, whoever, just my guys, and just you guys probably were like all kind of just like
You're welcome to get on the car as well. I feel like it. <laughs>
Thank you. 